Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Big Time Strength Podcast. Uh, today's episode is episode 111, and we have Coach Trenton Clausen on. And Coach, um, originally the first time that I ever listened to him um, and really got to see, well, it was, it was a portion of his program, but the depth that he brought it in and how he organized, categorized, and presented um, was kind of unique because it was 2018, it was pre-COVID stuff, where everybody was super comfortable um, presenting or talking online through Zoom or whatever it is. And he did his Mid-America Regional um, Conference portion of the clinic on, on the computer. And I thought he did a great job. Um, the way that they did it was they split up kind of fall training, winter training, spring, and then summer. And what, what Coach really talked about was speed training, agility, change of direction, and how he kind of puts all that together. And from then on, I'd been following him on Twitter um, actually, I guess I don't do a great job of following him because I just realized he's the head football coach too once, once I went through his bio. And so this guy's a busy dude. And I just want to give you a little bit of his background um, before we hop into the rest of the, the uh, like sponsors and all that type of stuff um, and then get him rolling. But his background is pretty extensive and I'm excited for the show because um, coach is a strength and conditioning coach, um, but he's also the head football coach, assistant track and field coach, powerlifting coach. And then he is um, just a man of, uh, of many experiences. Um, he he ex had uh, different experiences at TCU, Nebraska, Maryland, um, and each one of those were internships or assistant strength and conditioning coaches. I mean, like just a lot of different stuff. And he's going to be able to um, go into that a little bit deeper. But he's also going to talk about what it is like maybe transitioning from college to high school and getting – his undergrad, his master's, all that type of, all of the, all the schooling, and then going back and getting his teaching certificate. So I know there's a lot of people like that out there. I know there's a lot of college coaches that want to be at the high school level. So this will be a great show for you to listen in and see how you did that. Um, before we get to the rest of the show, uh, I would like to um, go through our sponsors. First of all, um, as always, we're, we're going to shout out to Team Builder. Team Builder does a great job um, during this time of COVID, during this time of not knowing if your, your team is going to be quarantined, if you have a, a two-week break, whatever it is, um, you just be able to hop on there, change things around, make sure that you roll with the punches, and um, Hewitt and the rest of the gang at Team Builder do a great, great job. Um, super, uh, super excited to have Hewitt on for um, what, what we did for a sponsor spotlight um, with Coach Berg. And if you haven't had a chance to listen to that, check it out. Um, so Team Builder, first sponsor, always appreciative of them. Awesome stuff. Um, highest recommendation for them. And then our second sponsor, and they came on just a little bit later, but man, power lift um, is what I've always lifted on. And I was talking to some other coaches about other equipment. And I am not trying to rub anybody through the mud or anything like that. But I'm, what I'm trying to tell you is, Power lift is sturdy stuff, okay? It will last forever. There's nothing that you really have to do for upkeep for it. It is just a really, really well-built um, piece of equipment. And they have a lot of different things. And one of the things that I've started to notice is the variability and the, and the adjustments and the attachments and all the things that maybe some other companies have been doing. Um, Power lift is, is on that train too, but I just know the quality that they have and they put into it is, is second to none. So, so appreciative of Powerlift. Mike Richardson is our contact. Um, you can find him in the show notes. Uh, Powerlift is an Iowa company. And for me, and as an Iowa strength coach, I am so happy to have them on as a sponsor. So um, Powerlift is our second sponsor. Coach, took a long time to get to you, but now I'm excited to hear your background, um, where you're at right now, what you're up to, and uh, – and then we'll dive in a little bit more after that. Yeah, so thank you so much for having me on the show. A, a huge fan. I've listened to it for, for years now. Um, kind of one of the inspirations for me to get into high school and kind of build um, kind of that camaraderie and things around the uh, high school setting with strength and conditioning here in Nebraska, too. Um, so currently I'm at uh, Conestoga Junior Senior High School. I am the strength and conditioning coordinator. I'm the head football coach. Um, I run the powerlifting program. I will be an assistant track coach this uh, school year. So like I said, I am busy. I'm just kind of the, the downfall between um, football season and powerlifting um, season starting. Prior to this, um, I was in the private sector at Athletes Training Center in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I did a stint there for about five years. I was an assistant performance coach there. Um, and then I also was the director of sports performance there. Prior to that, I was an assistant strength and conditioning coach at the University of Maryland. I worked under Drew Wilson there. He's now at Colorado. 
Um, I, the, the amount of things that I learned and, and going out to the University of Maryland, you know, it was two weeks after graduation day of college that I loaded my car up and, and I just headed out to Maryland, didn't know where I was going to live really. Um, I just knew I was going to have an assistant strength and conditioning position. And that's what I wanted. Um, prior to getting out at University of Maryland during my undergraduate career, I was a two year uh, strength, and strength and conditioning intern at the University of Nebraska for the football team. That was under James Dobson. Coach Dobson is now at uh, University of Vanderbilt. The things that I learned from Coach Dobson and his staff there at Nebraska um, was, was pretty amazing. Uh, before that, I was an intern at TCU for one summer. Um, Coach Don Summer, he's still the, the director of strength and conditioning there. Um, I also had the, the opportunity to intern under Zach Dakin there. He's the uh, head baseball strength and conditioning coach. Um, the, the amount of things that I learned from him really set me off on the right foot as my first internship um, with that. During that time at uh, Nebraska and TCU, I was doing my undergraduate studies in nutrition, exercise, and health science at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. Um, I then started my master's program through Ball State University in physical education and sport coaching while I was at Maryland. And then I finished that up when I, was, uh, when I moved back home and living in Omaha and uh, coaching at Athletes Training Center. Before I started my, my college route, um, I was an assistant football coach at Lincoln North Star High School in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, and I, uh, I did two years there. I was a volunteer for one of the years and I was a paid assistant uh, prior to that. So, you know, kind of starting at the high school setting, going into the college setting, then getting back to the high school setting. Um, the high school setting is a great place to be. Um, and, and I wouldn't change it for the world, kind of the route that I took to get here. That's awesome, coach. So, um, like we said, extensive background, a lot of different experiences around different parts of the country too. Tell me what draws you back to high school? What's something that really stands out to you? Um, and maybe coaches that are, are really looking at the college level that, that want to move to high school. What's something that you'd like to tell them? Oh, I think first and foremost, when you get in the college setting, um, it's, it's a lot about the wins and losses, especially with those power five schools and, and uh, being in the football strength and conditioning world. Um, so kind of getting back into the high school setting, I know that, that my jobs, um, kind of the, the, the things that I'm going to be judge on is getting kids engaged in training, uh, making sure they're having a great time, making sure that I'm making a positive impact in their life. And it's not so much about those wins and losses. You know, that's, that's awesome. I'd love to win every single football game. Um, but working with, you know, students that range from 14 years old all the way up to 18, there's a lot of things going on in their life. So I can make a, a huge impact with them inside the weight room, outside of the weight room kind of being around the, the team setting of that, that high school aspect too, you know, going back kind of the biggest inspiration, the first inspiration for me would start at the high school setting with my strength conditioning. Um, the things that my coaches had impacts on, on me uh, with my playing days of in high school. I think just looking back, I think I had a, um, a bigger impact at the high school level than at the college level when I was um, being coached and things like that. That's awesome. And one of the things that, I think most coaches strive for is, is impact right? and to be able to be in a young person's life and, and guide them or, or move them towards some goal that they want. I mean, is, is part of the coaching calling. And, and I think that's so cool um, when we got somebody coming with all that college experience and then seeing how much they can impact at that, at that younger level. And I, I know when I went, I was, a, I was a graduate assistant at the college level and I thought I wanted to be a college strength and conditioning coach. And I wondered when I went to the high school level, how I would connect with the student athletes. I wondered how I would impact them. I just, I knew it was going to be younger and it was going to be different. And now um, this is my fifth year, man, I, I'm telling you, this is what I'm meant to do, you know, and, and I love being able to walk into the school and know that that's my mission, you know, and that's what I want to do. Um, so coach, uh, leading into our next question, what is your program's mission? And what are some of your core values? What are, what are you looking uh, for your student athletes to gain from your program? So our mission at Conestoga, the entire school district, is to inspire and prepare students. Um, how I'm going to do that with strength and conditioning is I'm going to create and promote a training environment um, of relentless effort and attitude of excellence through student engagement. I think that's the number one thing is you need to have your students engaged in what you're doing, um, them understanding why you're doing things, uh, making it fun for them, making it um, – impactful for them because they're going to buy into it um, that much more within that within that philosophy or that mission statement um, there's we, we more so not core values but we call them beliefs kind of going off of um, Tim and Brian Kite uh, we are three beliefs the first one's relentless effort um, you know I stole that one right from Urban Meyer um, the second one's attitude of excellence and then the third one's accountable as a team uh, with those three beliefs um, and, and if you and if you do anything with with Tim and Tim or Brian Kite um, if, if these are truly your beliefs, your students are going to behave in a certain manner 
um, that you don't even ask them what their beliefs are because their, their behavior is going to show you exactly what their beliefs are. Um, and, and we talk about those three things in the football field. Uh, we talk about those three things in, in, in the weight room um, and, and just un- getting the kids to understand these are our beliefs and, and why are they our beliefs and what are the behaviors that we're looking for. Yeah. Um, you know, if you go, if you do a deep dive into this and I, it actually um, is the coolest thing for me. It's, it's my, my last two or three years, man, this is what I've been focusing on. And what coach is referring to is focus three podcast it is one of the best resources that you can do to find out more what he's talking about um, that. I can't remember what podcast number it is, but coach urban Meyer and Tim kite go through what it looks like for those three core, what they call beliefs and belief will drive behavior and behavior drives results and, and that's really what we're looking for is, and that's what culture, right? If you're going to put words to it is, is that, and just figuring out what those standards are for your program. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, talk to coach and then he'll see, he'll show you how he's implemented that at the high school level. And I, I think that's an awesome way to intro this show coach. It, and I like your guys' school um, overall mission to inspire and prepare and then just diving deeper into that and saying, okay, these are the ways that we're going to do this. And this is how we break it down. Um, so with, with, um, with that mission moving into, um, more of like specific to training, I guess, what is, what is your training philosophy? Like, um, we talk about mission, we want these outcomes, but what do you want to do once they're in the room? How are you doing it? You know, as far as that, I would say our program and our philosophy is very comprehensive in the manner that we're going to kind of, you know, and coach Boyle talks about it, filling up, filling up all your buckets. Um, so we're going to make sure each and every week we're going to train something that's going to promote speed and agility. We're going to do something that promotes strength. We're going to produce something that promotes uh, power, hypertrophy, things like that. So our categories that we kind of branch our strength exercises off of are force production, force absorption. You're going to get those through your running, your jumping, your Olympic lifts, your squat movements. That's another category. Hinging movements, asymmetrical squat, which would be a lunge pattern, a single leg squat. Um, a single leg step down. We kind of just move those all together as an asymmetrical squat, vertical push, vertical pull, horizontal pull, horizontal push. Um, and then our torso with those things. Um, so kind of when we, uh, this year it's a little bit different because we're block scheduling. So um, I have the kids for an hour and 42 minutes per block. Um, and I have them twice a week this year because we're, we're actually a four day school week um, school. We only go to school on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Um, so I'll have my kids on Tuesday and Thursday or Wednesday, Friday this school year, since we're going block scheduling with all the, the COVID guidelines. Um, so we're going to hit um, for half that time, it's going to be speed and agility for the other half. It's going to be um, strength, um, strength training stuff. So as, as far as that, we're going to hit a lot of different things. Um, I always tell um, people when I talk to them, we're an inch wide, but a mile deep. Um, so we're going to make sure we have progressions, regressions upon every exercise. Cause I want to be able to put the, the students in a best situation where they can have success. Um, so that the stimulus that we're placing upon them is going to have the correct response for them because you know, when you get in a, in a weight room with, with anywhere from a ninth grader to a 12th grader, they have many different goals. Um, their training ages are, you know, very, very different. So you're going to have to be able to find exercises and a stimulus that you can place upon them uh, to get the best result for each student. Coach, you, you know, you said two times a week, right? And it's different than what you've done in the past. Um, and you've had to adapt to obviously new, new COVID stuff, right? Like that's the name of the game is how well do you adapt? And, and once you have adapt, how can we continue to progress? Um, you're talking about progressions and regressions um, for no matter what athlete walks through the door. Show me what that, or tell me what that looks like um, for, let's say a freshman walking in compared to a senior. Um, what do their sheets look like? How are you um, differentiating those? And is it basically you say, this is the squat pattern. This is the way that we're going to load it. And then you go up and down this progression. Um, How how do you set that up? So, so week one, when, when the kids come in, we call it kind of an orientation. We call it our block zero orientation. So I'll take them through all those different categories on kind of an entry level exercise. And, and, And it's not so much to see if they can do the exercise correctly, but just to see where maybe some imbalances are, um, or maybe some compensations that they show. Um, and once they show that they can do those body weight exercises, we call it our block zero orientation. Um, then I can progress them onto a barbell or a dumbbell. Um, so I'll take the kids through the first month. We'll go from progression from, from, from bottom to top to where I think they should be at as a ninth grader or if they've taken a class before. Um, and then I'll kind of just notice if, if there's some things holding them back as we progress them through with those exercises. And just knowing, um, you know, for instance, we're, out, we're front squatting. We're in about week seven of our front squat um, cycle here. 
I know there's some kids that are just going to have to gobble a squat and we're just going to have to continue to gobble a squat until they can really own that pattern before we put a barbell on, on their, you know, on their shoulders when we front squat. Um, so it's not so much that I'm going to give everybody kind of the same program, but I just know I might have to dial back. So I have a, a regression pretty much for every exercise for that day. Um, and then we kind of just take steps back and, and we're going to have some kids that come in with injuries. So we're going to have, to have some different modifications. And, and one thing that we're doing now with team builder is, you know, being able to opt out of those exercises. So knowing exactly where they're going to opt out to, and then we can still um, kind of focus on loading them properly because they can actually pull up from that log um, from the, from the past exercise. So we can know exactly if we're, um, if we're loading them linearly or if we need to regress or if we just need to stay stagnant with them for that week. I, I like the, the way that you've got that set up and that, that nice feature with team builder is always good. Um, the, uh, the next question I would have with that is sometimes athletes see that a freshman and a senior or a boy and a girl or football and volleyball, they see that they, there's this unified approach. Okay. When you're explaining to the athletes, your students, um, why you program the way that you program how do you, how do you like um, get them on board? How do you get them to buy in? How do you get to show them this is the best way forward? I, I think one thing that, especially when I, when I was uh, interning for Coach Dobson at Nebraska, um, probably the thing that stuck with me the most for what he told me is he, he said, you need to coach with conviction or speak with conviction. You need to speak with a belief that what you're doing right now and what you're teaching these athletes to do is the most important thing and is the, the best way that they're going to be able to get you know, uh, Im improvement from. Um, so just being able to sell it to them with the words, with how you demonstrate the exercises, kind of showing them this is the way that we're going to do it. And this is why we're going to do it. And just with the excitement that you're able to present to the students or, or you know, I'm, sh I'm sure you've coached a squad a, a hundred different times, but every time that you want to teach it, you want to make sure that um, you're showing them that it's important. And it's and, and you, and the excitement that you show when you teach it um, and things like that, so that they can, they can kind of build that ownership in it. Um, with those things. So I think the biggest thing is, is how you sell the exercise to the students with how you teach it and how you coach it and, and how you demonstrate it. That's a great piece of advice there. I think that's awesome. And knowing it or not, I, I have to check it now. Think back. I mean, when we, even when we demo a new cycle, right, when we move to the next cycle and we progress some other things going through and you know, like I try to, like, I'm thinking back, I think I speak with conviction, but now knowing this, and I'm really thinking about it. Like I want to make sure that I attack that a little bit more and to have that intentionality. So uh, I, I like that. Thank you, coach, for that. So um, we talked a little bit about training philosophy and you might have covered this already, okay? Because there's a lot of gray area when we talk about philosophy and methodologies and stuff like that. But what are programming methodologies um, that you've had success with or that you follow right now? Um, I think at the high school setting, um, kind of that, that APRE or even uh, Mike Boyle re re refers to it just as progressive resistance exercise, uh, making sure that people are doing it correctly, number one, and then let's make sure we load them and we incrementally load them a little bit more maybe each week just so we can continue to progressively um, get those strength increases um, with those things. Um, a lot of the things that I like to do with um, Olympic weightlifting is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a progression based off of we're going to teach you how to jump with the barbell. Um, whether it be a snatch grip or a clean grip. And then we're also going to do some front squats with that so that we can make sure we can teach a good, good front squat progression when we can catch that bar um, with those things. But I think it just, it just comes down to making sure that the kids are responding in the manner um, that, they're, that they're showing that they're improving on their exercise technique, but also being able to improve on what weights they're using as they're utilizing those exercises. All right. That's good. Um, not, not to say like strength and conditioning is simple, right? But when you can simplify and then um, drive forward, right? Uh, a whole, I mean, when you have all those student athletes that are coming through your door, but you can continually progress them forward, that's, I mean, like that's the ultimate goal. And then if you can hit the culture, hitting your mission along the way and doing all those things, I think that's awesome. So I like, I like where you're at, coach. Um, to get that done and to train as many athletes as that you, that you get to train at the high school level, what are your favorite resources and tools and softwares and apps and all that type of stuff to optimize uh, your training workflow? And that could be on the back end or while it's in the weight room. Yeah, so first and foremost, um, Team Builder, I think it's a great resource um, if you're able to 
to, to come up with the funds to get it just programming wise and also just being able to log things and, and, and follow students. One thing that we were able to purchase this last school year, I, I was hoping I was going to be able to use it, but during COVID, I, I wasn't able to use it. So um, is we have a free lap timing system. So we use the free lap um, app on, on an iPad or, or an iPhone with those things. So that software there. Um, and, and we also, we, we, have a, we have a Dasher system too, which works really, really well for us uh, with those things. But those would be the top three. Um, kind of the resources that I use, I like to get a lot of my sprint stuff from Simply Fast or Altis. Um, we're doing a lot of the feed the cat stuff now, um, that Tony Holler did um, with those things. Uh, another coach that, um, they, uh, I believe it's called, um, sp sprint based football, um, coach Brad Dixon in Illinois. Um, he adapted a lot of the sprint stuff into a football practice. That's one thing that we really dove into this football season is being able to periodize our practices so that we're promoting s a speed. Um, as far as Olympic weightlifting, Greg Everett's a huge resource for me, catalyst athletics, um, with those things. But just I think that the number one thing is going out and visiting coaches and seeing them do their job, um, just kind of seeing things that maybe they, they read about this, this certain kind of training style and you're seeing how they, they promoted it and, and used it in their setting. Um, so then you can take it back to your school and say, hey, these things work for them, maybe not for me, and be able to adapt it so it works properly for you. So going out and visiting coaches I think is the number one way um, to kind of get those things from different coaches. I think that's – when you, when you talk about, you know, just professional development in general, it is awesome to read articles. It's awesome to listen to a podcast, listen to big time strength, right? That's, that's good stuff. But the conversations after that is really what I want to do. Um, you know, I want to make sure that coaches are connecting with you, like after the show, um, with your stuff in the show notes, just connect with you and ask more questions and reach out and then hopefully get a visit at some point, you know, site visits are awesome. Um, so I, I love where you went with that professional development in person or as much as you can with COVID stuff. Um, and just having those conversations, I think is what drives people forward. Uh, Twitter is a great resource. You know, articles are a great resource. Podcasts are great resources, but connection is, is where it's at. So I think that's great. Um, coach, this is the question that, that we ask at every show. Um, people answer it in a multitude of different ways. And I always love hearing how people are getting this done because it's the namesake of the show. How are you making the big time where you're at? Um, I, I think it's definitely twofold for me. Uh, my wife, she's a third grade teacher in the school district. She's also the, the cheerleading coach here at, at Conestoga. Um, so on a Friday night, uh, my boys are in the stands. Uh, my wife's coaching the cheerleading team. I'm coaching the football team. Uh, so just making sure it, my family's in this 100%. Um, uh, our oldest boy, he's a kindergarten in the school district. Our youngest boy is a preschooler. Um, so just getting my family around the entire school. Um, and, and, and my, my kids, if, if you ask them their favorite football team in all of the country, they would say the Conestoga Cougars, which is pretty cool because um, they know, you know, they can watch the NFL on Sunday, but they still say the Conestoga Cougars. So I think the number one thing is just my, my family is fully involved in the school. Um, the, the number two thing is Conestoga Junior Senior High School is literally in the middle of a cornfield here in Nebraska. Um, it's a consolidated school. Um, it, the closest town is three miles away. And between that town and the high school is, is farmland. Um, and I grew up in a, in a community very, very similar um, where we were in the middle of cornfield. So knowing that my students are, are pretty much, you know, geographically, they're in the same place where I was in high school. Demographically, the size of the school um, is pretty much identical to, to my alma mater. So just knowing that these students, um, I'm going to make an impact on them, whether they stay in the community and, and they do think great things for the Conestoga School District, or if they're going to go out and they're going to do something even be bigger and better, maybe. Um, outside the state or, or, or within the state. So just knowing that I'm able to make that impact with them, knowing that, you know, there's, there's a younger coach class in there somewhere in the school that, that hopefully I can make an influence on and impact on. That's, that's really cool. Um, to, have, to have your family tied into the school district so much is, is an awesome feeling. And the sense of pride and community that you get with that is, that has to be pretty sweet. So, and then obviously um, our background shape us so much so I, I, when I think about that, Conestoga kind of sounds like where I'm from, you know, where, where I, I coach at a little bit bigger school than that now and totally, totally love knowing, you know, where I came from and the coaches that coach me is the reason why I want to coach now is because of that impact. So that's awesome stuff, coach. Hey, we're going to move into um, finish, finish your questions. But before we do that, um, is there anything else that, that I'm missing? Like I just didn't dig deep enough on something that you want to make sure uh, listeners know about you or know about your program or the kids that you work with. 
I, I think the biggest thing kind of going along my route is I wasn't 30 years old until I taught. Um, I, I kind of took the long way around. So just coaches that are, that are aspiring. And I would say like, like, for instance, when I said, when, when I would listen to shows like this and hear about high school strength conditioning coaches and, and I'm in the pri- I was in the private sector that, at that time. And I'm like, man, how can I get my foot in the door to be a teacher? Um, and, and I had to go back to school and I, I did the transitional certification program through the university of Nebraska Kearney. Um, I already had my undergraduate. I had my master's. I was CSCS, but I knew I had to go back and get that, get that teaching certificate if I wanted to do this in a full-time setting. So any coaches there, you know, like, are in, are in a kind of situation where like, man, I just think that high school setting would be the, the greatest thing for me. And, and me speaking um, kind of on that, it, it, it's the greatest, it's the greatest job I've ever had. Um, I couldn't see myself anywhere else. So it, it's never too late. Like I said, I was 30 years old when I started teaching and uh, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world, kind of the, the way that I got here. Um, but there's always a way. Um, and if ever any, anybody ever wants to talk about it, I, kind of how I got into it, I would, I would just do it because it's something that I love to do. Um, teaching the teaching and also coaching. So it's, it's never too late to kind of jump in and, and get into this setting. My brother's a freshman this year in college and the conversations that I've had with him and maybe every young strength and conditioning coach out there, if you want to listen to what coach is saying here, one of my suggestions would be if you want to be a college strength coach, that is awesome. Okay. You can get a college strength coach, um, job and and be in the college setting while still getting your physical education or health and physical education or whatever it is that high school teaching degree slash certification okay so my biggest suggestion is get the high school stuff even if you're never going to use it your whole life you might end up being you know 50 or 60 down the road and you want to coach your kid or grandkid at the high school level now you have the opportunity or um, I don't know if you guys have seen, but man, the high school level is exploding with the number of strength coaches and opportunities that are there. Um, so it, it's just another awesome opportunity. And that would be my biggest suggestion. If you're going through college right now, get your teaching degree. If you want to be a college strength and conditioning coach, just in case, right. Um, coach, anything to add to that? I, that was kind of just a little spiel there, but I think it's, I think it's important for young coaches to know. No, I, I think definitely. Um, and, and just making sure that you're, you know, like you said, you're not, you're not fully committing to teaching, but you just, you just never know. Um, I know a lot of college coaches that are getting into the high school um, setting and it, it's, it's just, it's something new. Um, it definitely, these jobs were not open when we were in high school, um, things like that. So just knowing that there, there is that job um, opportunity now is, is something great. Sweet. All right. Moving into the finisher questions. What is your favorite book? Uh, my favorite book, um, probably as of now, is just Above the Line by Urban Meyer. I think uh, it's, it's not a training book. It's more of a culture book. Um, reading that, it kind of was a paradigm shift of what culture um, is and, and how to really be intentional on promoting what culture you want in the long run. Awesome. All right. Person that's influenced you the most? Um, in a professional setting, um, I would say that those three coaches that I worked for or with um, – Zach Dakin at TCU, um, James Dobson at Nebraska, now at Vanderbilt, and, and Drew Wilson when I was at the University of Maryland. Um, he's now at Colorado. Um, from, you know, kind of personal, I would say my father. I still remember to this day seeing my dad lift weights and, and go out for runs and things like that. And it really promoted physical activity for me. Um, and then when I was in high school, my brother, he, he was a really, really good football player. And uh, he, he, he took strength and conditioning very, very seriously. And it kind of laid that foundation for me so that I understood that these are the things that I was going to have to do to kind of become that football player that I wanted to be. Awesome influences. That's great stuff. How about your favorite quote? Uh, my favorite quote, it's a, uh, it's a Jerry Rice quote. I'm going to paraphrase it. It's today I'm going to do what everyone else won't do. So tomorrow I can do things that they can't do. Um, and, and like I said, I paraphrase that. Just kind of saying, you know, I'm going to make choices today so that tomorrow I don't have to make choices because they're already going to be made and I'm going to be that much better than somebody else. That's, that's, a, uh, that's a daily battle, right? That's, yep. that's discipline right there. And I, I love that. That's so cool. All right. How about your favorite hobby outside of training? So it can't be anything related to strength and conditioning. Um, something that I really enjoy doing, and we kind of live out on a lake out this way, is, is going kayak fishing. Um, you know, getting on the kayak and, and being physically active, but also getting that fishing in. Um, that's one huge one that I do. Probably don't do it enough of it now that I have kids, um, but something that I really enjoy doing. That's awesome. All right. Um, 
last one, and this one continues to, to grow the list so that we can continue to reach out to people and, and to learn from coaches across the nation. But who's a small school coach who's killing it and deserves a shout out? Um, a guy that really kind of took me under his wing when I was doing my practicum hours, Brandon Mimic, Dr. Mimic now. Um, he's at uh, Bennington High School here in Nebraska. A guy that, you know, I, I walked up to him at a, at a conference, didn't know who the heck he was. And I just said, hey, I'm, uh, I'm starting this teaching program that I'm going to do. I, I, I live in kind of the area. I need to get some practicum hours. And he said, heck yeah, you know, come on down. Um, you're, I'd be more than willing to have you in, the, in my class um, to help you out. Uh, Bennington High School. I had a buddy that went there. Um, I don't know if they had a strength coach at the time. Maybe they did, but this guy, uh, the same clinic that you spoke at for the Mid-America Regional, I remember listening to his presentation. He, he spoke at that same one, too. Um, awesome stuff. And maybe he was working on his doctorate at that time. I'm not sure. I think he was at the time. Yeah. So um, I'll have to reach out to him. I'll get him on the list. Coach, thank you for taking the time. Um, I know it's, it's always busy. You know, you said you're wrapping up with football, moving into powerlifting now. That's a lot of stuff on your plate. Um, to take the time to do this is awesome. What is the best way for people to reach out to you if they want to learn more about you and, and your situation? Probably email is the best way. Um, definitely respond. But I think an email always starts and then I end up giving out my phone number. Um, so definitely reach out to me. I, I, I love to share things that we're doing, but I also want to learn from other people. Um, so if anybody hears something that that, uh, that they like, I would definitely want to hear kind of how they think that they would, it would influence their program too. Sweet. Awesome. Coach, I will get that stuff in the show notes for you um, so other people can reach out to you. Um, like I said, super appreciative. Keep on doing awesome work. Thank you for making the big time where you're at. Yes. Thank you for having me on.